Okay, so I searched on the web trying to find the way to tram my mill. I started my grizzly up and tried to use the mill for the first time and a screw came out of the column the mill's attached to and the screw locked up the mill shaft. So in order to fix it, I had to pull off the entire head, take these four screws out, and <clears throat> pull it apart and take that screw out and replace it. Not a big deal, but the problem is, is now the head needs to be trammed back to the table. And this is what I'm attempting to do and cannot find anything on the web that deals with a, a small system like I have. So I'm going to do this video to try to help the small guy out. So one of the first things I did, of course, as you see, I ended up having to remove the chuck um, to be able to use my dial indicator to be able to swing basically in a circle. And I'm tramming against the table like the big boys show, even though it's a very small table and I'm not sure how accurate it's going to end up being, but it is what it is. So as I tried to do this, um, in trying to figure out how to shim this and to line up the spindle correctly, I kept tried several times and kept getting quite confused of, you know, how to actually shim it and which direction the head is versus the table and and I came up with uh, at least uh, one way to figure out which way the, the head is actually tilted and uh, I made up a little chart to help me out here. Go. It's really simple, just represents the head of the uh, mill and the spindle line coming down and then it represents the dial indicator and as you turn the dial indicator you'll see as you turn the dial indicator um, you'll have the numbers do plus or minus and depending on uh, what your start point and your end point is, you can quickly determine which way the head is cocked, not which way the table is cocked, because the table should always be 100% uh, level, and it's the head that you're worried about. So, let's kind of test this out. Okay, <clears throat> as an example, Let's first um, determine if this head is tilted this way or that way. Okay, so we're going to measure this axis. And so with my little uh, chart that I made, my little indicator chart, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, position my dial, which I already basically have, and I'm going to run that to zero. Okay, so we'll go to zero here. And then I'm going to spin it, the spindle, 180. And of course I can't see that. So that's why I have my mirror here. And I don't know if you're going to be able to see see that. I don't think you're going to be able to see it here. But basically it says that the dial went up. It went from zero to seven thousandths. Okay. So we know that we moved in the plus direction. So if I go back to here back to zero and we know we moved in the plus direction so what does that mean well if we come over here 
and I look and I say, okay, this side is where I zeroed. So it's either this side or this side. So I just pick a side and I say, hey, did I zero on this side? Yes, I did. Did it go to minus? No, it did not. It went to plus. So I come over here and I said, said I zeroed here and it plussed. So what that tells me is, is this head is tilted to the right when I look at it. Okay. So what I did is made some just sticky notes here and made some little plus signs. And I'm just going to represent this on my column. I'm going to say that side's tilting down, tilting to the right. So now at least I have a reference point to start with in my head. So if, as I forget, I can come back and figure that out. So now let's uh, do the other axis. Okay, it takes two hands to uh, move that head since I have to jump the gap with the gauge there, so I have to cut out. But here we are, and I'm going to just zero this. You can zero either side, it doesn't matter. Um, I'm going to zero there, and then I'm going to swing my gauge around. Okay, swing my gauge around. Another 180. And we can see we moved in the plus direction on that one. Okay. So, if I look at my chart here, I know that I zeroed here and it moved to the plus, so I zeroed here to the plus so it's going to the right. And I'll just take my sticky here on this plane and say okay this side is down. Okay so so now we can see that and keep in mind of exactly where our head is at the moment and it's probably going to change as we continue to tram, but at least we've got to start and can keep our bearings of where we started. Here I just ran a rod through so I could align my spindle relatively straight. I don't think it has to be 100%, but because this head swings when the back nut is loose, kind of have to at least straighten it up, at least for the tramming I'm thinking. So that's kind of a quick way that I align that up. Okay, I just tilted up this head and put a little piece of brass, brass uh, shim stock and put it right, right there, kind of crammed it in there. And Oh, what size is this? This is about, I don't know, uh, 18 thousandths. It seemed a little big, but it was, tried it out and it worked. So, put it in there. Now I'm going to zero out on the left side. Spin it. Okay, it went to the plus side and it's about 18 thousandths. So, come into my chart, zeroed here, it went to plus, so it's still down, still down on, on that side. What I'm going to do is, I'm going to tighten this up because this is loose. I, I had tightened the back one up. All of them were like kind of snug, finger snug. So I'm gonna watch my mirror here. I'm gonna tighten this, this 
down a little bit. And I'm just going to run it to zero just, just to see what it does to me here. Come here. And now I'm out there, so I'm going to go to zero on that again. Run around. And about seven, seven thousandths out. So I'm going to continue to tighten that up. I went to zero again. Now, this actually was part of this. Problem is you can't get down in there to loosen them up, and this takes forever. So I ended up cutting this off, and it's pretty handy to be able to get down there and quickly tighten and loosen. Okay, I keep going around, adjusting, loosening all back up, putting different shims in. Uh, very frustrating because <clears throat> figuring out the exact placement of the shim and in the thickness, you're just going to have to do it over and over again. Um, but basically, I'm pretty darn close right now, so I'm going to put this shim and stick it in there just a little further, hoping that it'll. Uh, take out the about a thousand different than I difference that I have. Um, but basically, you know, my patterns come down to I end up <clears throat> holding one tight and I loosen the other three. And I loosen them up pretty good so that I can lift up this front end because the front end is what I'm trying to lift. And uh, so then I come back and I loosen this, and it slowly goes way out of tilt here. You can see the gap down here gets pretty darn big, but that's the only way I can give it enough space to lift the head up and push my shins in. Then I'll come back, tighten that one back down. Again, you'll figure out your pattern as you go, but okay, so that's kind of snug there. Then I'll come back and just snug these down and then start my adjustment process all over again. way, zeroes that way. There's some slop in here when I go back and forth. It'll, the needle will change and so I think it's just some slop in the mechanism but if you're really careful uh, what I was doing was I went ahead and made sure I was coming forward the same way either back or forward but that seemed to fix some of the slop issues um, as I came into the reading so I would come this direction, 
read that, go around, and make sure I came into this direction and read it, and not let it get the backlash in there where I came back, because there's like this back and forth gap here that <coughs> changes things potentially. I'm not sure. So, several hours. Uh, it's not easy. It's time consuming, back and forth, back and forth. Um, the little chart really helped me out, again, because of the, every time I needed to do adjustment, I was able to quickly figure out by facing the direction, zero, if it's minus, it's that way. <clears throat> zero, because I'm looking at it, this is when I zeroed, if it's plus or if it's minus, so it tells you which way it's tilting. Just handy to keep on, on your lathe while you're doing this. Okay, all back together, trammed up, ready to go. If you see anything that I did wrong, comment below and help some other people out. I'm sure there's an easier way, but I just had to try something and this was my way. And So let me know if there's a better, better way. Thanks for watching.